soon, we will begin our webinar in a few minutes, but prior to our formal proceedings, allow me to just provide a few reminders and some guidelines for an effective and insightful event. As a general practice, may ask all join the Zoom platform to kindly mute your microphones, especially during presentations whenever others are speaking. Please be mindful of the surrounding noise in your location as a courtesy to the current speaker or presenter. Please use the hand raising function to be recognized. For our colleagues joining us in Facebook and YouTube Live, we encourage everyone to actively participate and write your feedback and questions in the comment section. Members of the organizing team will take note of your questions and if time permits, have them responded to by our speakers. Certificates of attendance will be issued accordingly to all registered participants of the webinar. Please confirm your registration by answering the evaluation form. The link to the event evaluation form will also be shown at the end of the webinar. So once again, I invite everyone to sit back and relax as our program will begin in a few minutes. Again, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nemo of Simeo Inotech, and I will be your host for this afternoon. Our webinar today is done in celebration of Simeo's 55th anniversary. Our webinar aims to inform and promote to the Simeo community and the general public our research, training, and knowledge management programs for the Southeast Asian region. Specifically, the event will feature the following. The findings and recommendations of the regional research on ASEAN integration, change management responses of selected Southeast Asian ministries of education, information on the Simeo Inotech Research Partnership Grant, or the SIRPG, our massive open online course, M or MOOC, on becoming a better teacher every day, or the BVTE, and the Southeast Asian School Leadership Program, or the CSLP, an online program. And towards the end of the webinar, and in line with our common thrust of encouraging trailblazers in changing the education landscape in ASEAN, we hope to recognize the contributions of change makers and change leaders through the Southeast Asia Educational Innovation Awards. We hope to unveil the guidelines and criteria for everyone's information this afternoon. This webinar stands as a great opportunity for Simeo Inotech to introduce to the region our commitment to attain the goals set in our five-year development plan and the Simeo seven priority areas, specifically on adopting a 21st century curriculum, promotion of harmonization in higher education and research, and revitalizing teacher education. At this point, may I invite Dr. Ramon C. Bacani, our center director, for his welcome remarks. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, to our uh, senior colleagues from the Philippines, from knowledge products of uh, Simeo Inotech, the change management uh, strategies uh, to, in response to uh, the vision of uh, ASEAN integration. And uh, 
become a professional development program on uh, becoming a better uh, teacher uh, every day. Well, just to provide some context, I think we, over the past several years, uh, we have been uh, uh, hearing a lot and participating in discussions about this vision of uh, ASEAN uh, integration. Um, much talk has been devoted to the challenges and opportunities, uh, mainly in the uh, education uh, uh, area. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there have been some discussions uh, on the mobility of uh, professionals and uh, workers and the mobility of uh, students and academic uh, personnel. But uh, despite these uh, discussions, not much uh, discussion has been uh, devoted uh, to how uh, ministries of education of uh, Southeast Asia, uh, what changes uh, they will be uh, adapting uh, to be able to ensure that their uh, uh, education systems uh, respond to this vision of uh, uh, ASEAN in integ integration. And the purpose of this uh, work of uh, Senior Inotech is really to be able to fill in this uh, knowledge gap. And that is why over a period of, uh, I believe, uh, uh, one and one and a half years, uh, our uh, research uh, group uh, has been conducting uh, interviews and focus group discussions uh, with ministries of education in selected uh, uh, CMO uh, member countries. And uh, this afternoon, we will be presenting the results uh, coming out of this work, as well as uh, recommendations uh, 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 which have been made uh, uh, as, the, as part of the effort to uh, respond to this vision of uh, ASEAN integration. The other uh, main feature of this uh, program this afternoon is uh, becoming a better teacher every day, which is one of the professional development uh, courses of uh, Simio Inotech. But uh, this uh, particular uh, professional development uh, course, uh, it's an online course, uh, is uh, focused uh, primarily at uh, building up the capability, capabilities, the competencies of our uh, Southeast Asian teacher, uh, which are embodied in the Southeast Asian uh, teacher competency framework, which uh, was the product of a collaborative effort uh, among uh, the Teacher Council of Thailand the Simio Secretariat and the uh, Simio Inotech. And uh, this, uh, let me just uh, briefly present the main elements of this uh, Southeast Asian uh, teacher competency framework. Uh, there are four. First, you know and understand what I teach. The second is uh, help my students learn. The third is uh, work with uh, parents, community, and stakeholders. And fourth, uh, becoming a better uh, teacher every day. And uh, so uh, this uh, professional development uh, course is intended, as I mentioned, uh, to help uh, uh, our uh, teachers uh, build up their uh, competency along these uh, areas. And let me just, uh, well, uh, talk a bit about, uh, well, one uh, element of this uh, teacher competency framework. Uh, for those of you who uh, uh, listened to the policy discussions uh, this morning, when the results of the Southeast Asian uh, primary uh, learning metrics uh, were presented uh, in uh, Bangkok, uh, Thailand, uh, well, uh, the, among the uh, important uh, findings there was that uh, certainly the home environment uh, has a very strong influence on the uh, learning outcomes of our uh, students in, uh, uh, as they learn uh, reading, writing, and mathematics. Uh, the support that uh, students uh, receive from their uh, parents and guardians and the resources at, at home are uh, important uh, determinants or at least uh, influence to some extent uh, the performance of our students as they learn these uh, basic uh, subjects. And so I think uh, it is important for us to recognize this and, uh, and the, this uh, professional development course on becoming a better uh, teacher every day really talks about the uh, journey of every uh, teacher uh, uh, for his or her uh, personal and uh, professional uh, growth uh, to make sure that uh, they are able to uh, really uh, contribute to the achievement or the performance of their uh, uh, students. And um, hopefully uh, that will uh, help us uh, realize this uh, vision of uh, a better future uh, for every learner in Southeast Asia. 
So uh, on this note, uh, let me just uh, welcome everyone to this uh, webinar on uh, innovations in education. And uh, we hope that uh, all of us, as we celebrate the 55th anniversary of the Southeast Asian Ministers of uh, Education Organization, will remain committed to, the, uh, to this uh, notion of uh, regional cooperation in uh, education, and science, and culture which is the uh, main uh, goal behind the establishment of the CIMEO organization. And we hope that uh, all of us who are uh, involved in the uh, uh, Southeast Asian education, uh, uh, we hope that uh, you will find this uh, webinar uh, useful to you in your uh, personal and uh, professional growth. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for that inspiring message, Dr. Bahani. I think I speak on behalf of the audience and everybody who's tuned in right now when we say that innovation is indeed the core of what Simio does as an institution. Now, to further provide a bigger picture as to how Simio, our parent organization, has left its mark on ASEAN learners and educators, we will be hearing from the director of Simio Secretariat, Dr. Ethel Agnes P. Valenzuela, for the opening message. Three, two, to Dr. Ramon C. Bacani, Director of Simeo Inotech, officials and staff from the Ministries of Education of Simeo member countries, officials from Simeo Regional Centers, educators, stakeholders, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good day to all of you. I'm honored to be part of this webinar on Innovations in Education change management practices for ASEAN integration and professional development in Southeast Asia. I commend Simeo Inotech's effort in reaching out to the wider community of Southeast Asia and the general public on the center's research and training programs. I'm also glad that we are responding to the call of the Ministers of Education or the Simeo Council of Ministers specially laid out during the Ministerial Policy E-Forum to enhance the capacities of teachers and key education enablers in their new and continuously evolving role via technology-mediated and alternative delivery modalities as the region adapts to the new normal brought by the COVID-19 pandemic. Foster a learning environment that is quick to respond to disruption being agile, enabling learning to continue from ECCE and higher education, using appropriate education solutions and technology that best respond to the needs and context of each member country. Sustain the development and allocation of resources, utilizing open educational resources in the region that best respond to the needs of the learners in every countries in Southeast Asia, wherever they may be and in whatever condition they are in. As part of Simeo family, Inutech was able to reach a number of learners and teachers, shared a number of innovation and responsive knowledge products that are truly needed by learners in Southeast Asia. Despite the difficulties encountered in implementing planned activities for the year due to the COVID-19 lockdown, Simeo Inotech continued to do researches and capacity building activities that they're about to present today, the ASEAN integration research findings and a better teacher every day on the upcoming massive open online courses and the launch of the Southeast Asian Education Innovation Award. It is also noteworthy to know that the knowledge resources to be launched today 
are aligned with the SIMEO priority areas, specifically on the 21st century curriculum, the promotion of harmonization of higher education and research, and revitalizing teacher education. This event also coincides with the 55th SIMEO anniversary with the theme Stronger Together for Quality, Accessible, Responsive Education. And I am delighted that the knowledge resources will facilitate quality, accessible, and responsive education in Southeast Asia and even beyond. The pandemic has indeed profoundly affected our way of living, and it has also expanded different learning spaces from the traditional four corners of the brick and mortar classrooms it has inevitably expanded into a virtual realm and what was one supplemental alternative learning platform became the mainstream. I am glad that Inutech remained true to its vision of having a better future for every learner in Southeast Asia. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Thank you for that message, Dr. Valenzuela. At this point, we now proceed to the main part of our webinar, the presentation of the regional research on ASEAN integration. This study is a research initiative done by Simeo Inotech with the goal of understanding how the ministries of education in Southeast Asia responded to the demands and requirements of ASEAN integration. The study will present innovative change management practices of the Ministries of Education, including emerging priorities for the education sector in Southeast Asia. Our lead presenter for this afternoon is the head of Simeo Inotech's Educational Research Unit. She has extensive background on educational research and was involved with numerous research projects. These research papers were peer-reviewed and have tackled issues of ethnicity, national identity, citizenship, education, multiculturalism, school leadership, and comparative international education. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sherlyn Almonte Acosta, our senior specialist from the Educational Research Unit. Thank you, Nemo, for um, your generous introduction. Dr. Ramon C. Bacani, Director of Simio Inotech. Dr. Ethel Agnes E. Valenzuela, Director of Simio Secretariat. Our esteemed reactors, Honorable Jesus L. R. Mateo, Undersecretary of Planning and Human Resource and Organizational Development, Field Operations, and International Cooperation Office of the Philippine Department of Education. Ms. Mary Ann Therese Manuson, Assistant Director of, uh, for Education, Youth, and Sports Division, ASEAN Sociocultural Community Department. To our colleagues and uh, friends from uh, the different ministries of education, to all the participants, teachers, and administrators, Good afternoon. The title of my presentation is Towards Increasing Asian Integration, Change Management Strategies of Selected Southeast Asian um, ministry, Ministries of Education. So the theme of um, the webinar is Innovation in Education. So as I've mentioned, the theme of the webinar is innovation in education. I'm trying to uh, 
um, change my slide, but I think I don't have any problem. But just to go on, um, as I mentioned, the webinar is on innovation in education. And the study that I will be presenting to you focuses on the change management strategies of the ministries of education in Southeast Asia, which entail innovative programs and practices in education in the region responsive to increasing ASEAN integration. In line with the celebration of Senior's 55th anniversary, um, with the team, as mentioned earlier, Stronger Together for Quality, Accessible, and Responsive Education, the study unraveled the endeavors of the ministries of education in Southeast Asia to respond to the challenges of ASEAN and to continue to provide programs and measures for responsive and accessible quality education. I'm sorry, my slide is not moving. Are oh, there? So I'll go to the next slide just to, to uh, give you the flow of my presentation. I'll be giving the brief background on ASEAN, the methods and the research question, then the conclusion, and then the recommendation. So the Association of Southeast Asian Nation, or ASEAN, was established to address the security concern in Southeast Asia. ASEAN, with one vision, one identity, and one community, has 10 member countries. And um, the 10 member countries are operating within the so-called ASEAN way, we're in consultation, consensus, and non-interference in the internal affairs. So the 10 member states originally are um, ASEAN as uh, the founding members of ASEAN are Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and was later joined by Brunei, Jerusalem, Vietnam, Lao, PDR, Myanmar, and Cambodia. Okay, so this is the, um, I'm showing you the, um, the ASEAN journey to community building. So just to share with you some of the milestones achieved by um, the ASEAN in community building. First, as you all know, in 1967, um, ASEAN was founded and um, it is uh, in line with the goal of accelerating the economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the region through joint endeavors and promoting regional peace, stability, through abiding respect for justice and the rule of law. The next one is in 1997, the ASEAN Vision 2020. So at this time, ASEAN was envisioned as a concert of Southeast Asian nation outward looking, living in peace, stability, and prosperity, bonded together in partnership, in dynamic development, and in community of caring society. Followed by 2003, the Valley Concord Tree. So this time, they established the three pillars of the ASEAN, namely the political and security cooperation, economic cooperation, the sociocultural cooperation. And then in 2007, the 12th um, ASEAN Summit was held in Cebu. And this time, the um, ASEAN Vision then of 2020 was accelerated into the ASEAN Community 2015. So by 2015 of December 31st, the realization of the ASEAN Community uh, should have been um, achieved. And uh, so along with this, there are um, other um, initiatives like that of the ASEAN Qualification Framework. We're in the different, I mean, national uh, qualification framework of different countries um, were based. Now, given all those challenges, given all those initiatives, um, the different milestone of the ASEAN community, um, what are then uh, the demand and challenges of um, ASEAN integration or the concomitant demand and challenges of ASEAN integration to the education sector? 
So with the many policies and programs and initiatives that you might have heard about um, ASEAN integration, you might have wondered what happened and how did the economic, political, and sociocultural sector respond to um, the concomitant demands and challenges of the increasing ASEAN integration. So the question is, how do the ministers of education respond to the challenges and demand of increasing ASEAN integration? With that, what do we mean by demands and challenges? So what are these demands and challenges? These are actually articulated in the 28th um, education agenda or 28 point education agenda. And these are actually captured in the five-year work plan of education, ASEAN, educa uh, ASEAN uh, work plan for education 2011-2015. Um, just to remind you that um, this study was conducted, we, we, we made use or uh, the 2011-2015 the work plan serve as uh, one of the important uh, literature in, in this study, um, given the period when this was conducted. As of now, there is an, uh, the revised version, 2016 um, version of um, the five-year work plan of education. So what are these demand and challenges? So promoting Asian awareness through strengthening the Southeast Asian history, prehistory, and even having an understanding of indigenous knowledge. So the other one is, um, the next one is increasing access to quality primary and secondary education, increasing quality of education that includes performance standards, lifelong learning, and professional development. So part of this is the continuous enhancement of access to quality education for all, including, including rather physically challenged, less advantaged, and marginalized group. Further, this also includes strengthening of ICT, so this ICT integration to education. And um, the third one, the cross-border mobility and internationalization of education in support to other sectoral bodies uh, with an interest in education. So this also um, include um, strengthening higher education sector through the implementation of the robust quality assurance. It fostered the role of higher education in socioeconomic development through university industry partnership and provide capacity building programs for teachers and other key state stakeholders. And other initiatives also that complement to the efforts of other sectors in meeting the demands of economy through lifelong learning. So I would like to emphasize that the importance of improving education sector was um, given during the Cha Am Kwan Hin Declaration on strengthening cooperation and education to achieve an ASEAN caring and sharing community. All right, given these triggers, so you may have, at this point, you have an idea of what happened. And so given those um, um, policies, programs, initiatives, they serve as trigger for us to ask the question, how are the Southeast Asian ministers of education implementing change management strategies to respond to the demands and challenges of increasing ASEAN integration? What are the reasons and nature um, of changes deemed necessary in each ministries of education? With that, we were able to um, answer this question by interviewing uh, as mentioned by Dr. Bakani, Bakani, we made an interview and a focus group discussion to the uh, different representatives of uh, the ministries of education. And they belong to seven countries. So as mentioned in the title, selected countries. So these are Brunei, Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, PDR, Malaysia, Philippines, and Thailand. Others, uh, other countries not part of the studies were invited, but unfortunately we were not able to um, uh, interview them um, or make schedule with, with them for interview or focus group discussion, um, despite uh, follow-ups. Okay, so given that, we know for a fact that uh, change managed or rather change is inevitable. Okay? So, because change is in inevitable, we, 
we can say that the education sector does not stand still or should not stand still. And so the ministries of education respond to the different changes, in particular, as, uh, given this topic, the, the, the action integration, for the students, teachers, and administrators to become aligned with uh, increasing action integration. All right, so as we answer the research question um, raised in the study, we were able to understand each country context and how they implement change strategies and the reason for implementing change uh, to increasing ASEAN integration. So as each country unravel their programs and practices, we were able to develop change strategy process framework common to the selected countries in Southeast Asia. So Thailand in particular developed the um, ASEAN Educational Strategic Plan, which envisions that Thai people are ready for ASEAN community. Curricular reforms were undertaken by the Philippines, Brunei, uh, the Rizalam, Cambodia, Malaysia, while curricular review for increasing ASEAN integration was done by Thailand. National teacher standards and assessment were enhanced in Cambodia, Indonesia, Lao PDR, Malaysia, and Thailand. Further, Cambodia, Lao PDR, and Indonesia strengthened their program to increase access to education. All ASEAN member states have prepared for human capacity building in order to achieve their vision and be ready for increasing ASEAN integration. So with that, we were able to document the process carried out by each country and has traced common path using change management models and principles. So this is actually represented by this circle and um, this is the, the educational change management process framework in the ASEAN. So let me walk you through the different steps. So we have five steps, bear with me with the steps. At first, we have trigger for change. In this stage, stakeholders can identify the triggers or drivers that kickstart the impetus for change. These triggers may be specific responses to the needs and opportunities and issues relevant to increasing ASEAN integration, as well as other international initiatives and mandates. So in cognizance that not all countries in the study stated that increasing ASEAN integration serve as their trigger for educational change, education change in educational policies, program, and practices. The recognition that many of the implemented changes are in line with the priority areas in education of the ASEAN based on the education work plan 2011-2015. Brunei Darussalam, for example, considered the Wawasan 2035, and that is their national plan, which led to the development of the ministry's vision um, of quality education towards developed, peaceful, and prosperous nation, along with its mission of providing holistic education to achieve fullest potential for all. In the case of Cambodia, it clearly stipulated um, in their education strategic plan, ESP, then back then is 2014 to 2018. Certainly this has been um, updated. That the national vision 2030 and ASEAN integration were considered in implementing change. In fact, they considered ASEAN integration as an opportunity for broadening horizon for collaboration in all aspects of education. The other participant made mentions of um, external factors such as globalization and other international initiatives and mandates that serve as trigger for change. The next step is reconnaissance. So review current state and identify future state. The country ex uh, demonstrates uh, how choosing appropriate change change agent and engaging the internal and external stakeholders in the change process have proven to be effective strategies for education stakeholders to review current context and identify an ideal future state for relevant education ministries as well as for selected ASEAN countries. Simply put, 
It's basically reviewing how are they and how they want to become. For any change to take place, it is important to ascertain on how far has a certain MOE implemented its previous plan, determine what they need to continue doing, what policies and programs remain relevant and responsive for the stakeholders. According to Indonesian representative, in order to maintain alignment between internal policies and external environment, the changes implemented are responses to pressing external demands for change while also taking into consideration their national or internal context. This is also demonstrated by the Philippine case wherein the change strategies employed by the three agencies seek to foster competitiveness of Filipino students so they are better prepared for increasing ASEAN integration. Let's go to the third step. This is plan to change. So if earlier they tried to review how far have, have they gone or what, what happened in, the, in, in their context and how they want to proceed this time is focusing on what and how. Now, what are they going to change and how are they going to change? So the unified strategies are essential um, in both in the internal and regional integration. In this stage, setting realistic expectations and goals for, uh, when proposing changes is necessary. So this is clearly demonstrated by the case of Malaysia. The change management strategy of Malaysia's MOE give premium to evidence-based planning. Holistic approach to change management was demonstrated by examining planning and implementing changes for basic to higher from basic to higher education. There were there um, they engaged coalition of experts constant monitoring and evaluation, and they ensured strong and committed leadership. On the other hand, the case of Lao PDR shows that gradual changes are being implemented based on the most pressing need in the national context, which coincide with the changes needed for the increasing regional integration. So in the case of Lao PDR, the top down and bottom, bottom up strategies were welcome. Change pertinent to increasing ASEAN integration are planned and implemented in a collaborative, collaborative way. The next step is implement change, right? So they have planned already and so they will implement change. What is crucial for the implementation of change for the ministries of education are two um, um, two factors, and these are the ASEAN way and communication. So it's very important that in implementing change, according to the ministries, ministers, uh, rather the represent representatives of the ministries of education, clear communication and observance of the ASEAN way are contributing factor so that the fourth stage, which is the actual implementation, would be successful. So this includes the diplomatic ways of collaboration to clarify the goals of ASEAN integration. Malaysia articulated the importance of communicating changes to the different education stakeholders. It was even mentioned that they maximize all forms of communication to reach out to their stakeholders. They also generate um, feedback from their stakeholders to better improve their policies and program, and also to get information on how change should happen. Likewise, in Indonesia, they share their um, they share that they implemented feedback mechanism, even the school level, so that the voices of um, stakeholders can be heard at the planning stage. So even Lao PDR highlighted the importance of top down and down top strategy, so that changes can be shared and at the same time the voices from the villages can be heard well and represented and can be represented well. So the fifth step is monitoring and evaluation. So monitoring and evaluation refers to improving plans and implemented uh, rather implementation by adjusting um, changes based on context. So in the case of Thailand, 
decentralized mechanism for the implementation and monitoring of programs and strategies were shared. Malaysia articulated that monitoring and evaluation key performance indicators and exerting strong leadership commitment in consolidating gains and producing more change were highlighted. Then in the case of Indonesia, varied forms of assessment, monitoring, and evaluation process were put into place. Then in Cambodia, monitoring progress in different levels of the ministries through key performance indicators were mentioned. Now for Brunei Darussalam, it is important to develop follow through measures to monitor and evaluate um, the implemented changes. And of course, for the Philippines, keeping abreast with international context while continual, continuously improving and aligning programs and initiatives that were implemented in line with the education system reforms. So it's very recently that um, we responded to um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, for example. So we are, our ministries of education is very much aware on what to change and how to change. Further, the change management process, as you can see, I'm flashing again the, the framework. So education change management process framework, as you can see, it is not linear, but circular we suggest that the result of monitoring and evaluation will provide inputs to serve as trigger to continue the necessary changes that support increasing action integration. The process of change would necessitate the firm support from relevant education ministries who can serve as change agent and the champion for change. So if you would notice in the inner circle, we have um, the synergistic uh, leadership and management education system. So it's very important, the leadership, the kind of leadership for ASEAN integration is really necessary for the educational system to be responsive. Moreover, synergistic leadership and management for the different levels from basic technical vocational education, higher education, is deemed necessary in developing competencies and skills needed by the learners who are the center of the framework to become competitive in the Asian region. Moving on. So as we can see, um, how do we, I mean, the, for this slide, let's characterize the change management uh, strategies the Asian way. So first we have change management as informed by evidence. So as you can see, as you might have heard, or based on my previous um, discussion, the, the ministries of education act on what is needed, what is necessary based on evidence. They also reflect in their own context. They see what's happening in the context of other countries or how far are they um, as far as their performance is concerned with the other neighboring countries. Further, the change management as thoughtful act and coherent. Interestingly, many of um, the country representatives, they mentioned that they have strategies to reach out and um, to reach out their, to, the, to their stakeholders and also to find different fora so that information or the, the, the um, ideas or information needed for change can be derived from the ground, in which case they set manageable goal consultation in various fora and embracing diversity of their constituent of their stakeholders. Further, in that case, are given that the change management also as an empowerment. You know, it's part of the action way. It's an empowerment in the sense that the stakeholders are being heard and so they are empowered and not only the leaders that are or who are empowered in the process. The other one, another characterization is that change management nurtures that nurtures sustainability. So they identify risk before ruling it out. And so monitoring and evaluation and layering of strategies are ever present for the continuous um, responsiveness of the educational policies and program for increasing action integration. With that, um, in conclusion, 
The demands and challenges of increasing regional integration prompted, prompted responses from ministries of education of the ASEAN member states, countries in Brunei, Jerusalem, Cambodia, Lao, PDR, Indonesia. And they have aligned their strategies, um, educational plans with their national vision or development plan. Malaysia, the Philippines, and Thailand crafted their higher education strategic plan to develop competitive human resources. Further, implementation of change management strategies for coping with increasing ASEAN integration among ministries of education in Southeast Asia, taking into consideration their unique and individual context. Also, the change management strategies implemented by the MOEs indicate the nature, extent of readiness, and even sustainabilities of educational reform for increasing ASEAN integration. With that, I'll be giving you the recommendations of the study. But at this point, I have just selected, in the interest of time, I selected um, num some recommendations. But in our publication, we have an array of recommendations. As I've said, for the, um, for the interest or in the interest of time, I only have few recommendations. And um, they're actually lumped into different categories and um, or um, yeah, under the umbrella of um, uh, team or categories of the, the recommendations. Okay, first we have uh, a recommendation on change strategies. So here we have fostering alignment of change management strategies for the different levels of education. That is from basic education, technical vocational education, higher education, such that, such that common goal is achieved within the context of increasing action integration. Continue to implement strategies that are responsive to challenges and demands of increasing action integration without losing sight of each country context, a clear manifestation of the action way. Regional and for regional collaboration, so strengthen alignment and harmonization of regional initiative, CMU and action um, spearheaded by the secretariats of each organization to enhance collaboration, planning, joint project implementation, staff exchange, collaborative monitoring, and evaluation. Second, under regional collaboration, revisit the role of the ASEAN in order to provide specific technical guidance to support effort of the ministries of education among member states in preparing for increasing regional integration. The third under regional collaboration is implement continuous evaluation and improvement of the action work plan in education, which may be done by developing specific success indicators along with goals, targets, and mechanism. Next, we have regional research under regional research and knowledge sharing. Um, first, we recommend to sustain collaborative, comparative educational research across ASEAN member states to facilitate cross-fertilization of ideas, policies, good practices, lesson learned within the region. Second, support efforts to translate and contextualize national and regional knowledge products to uh, local languages, and strengthen advocacy communication and knowledge sharing regarding ASEAN integration within MOEs and stakeholders, including use of technology and social media. Support under support and sustained educational policy planning, one support and sustained strategic and purposive planning by MOEs to address risk, challenges and opportunities for education sector arising, increasing ASEAN integration. Designate or create focal unit in charge of ASEAN integration activities of the ministries of education in order to guide educational directions pertinent to increasing ASEAN integration. Third, examine laws, rules, regulation, and guidelines that help facilitate sustainable reforms, activities, and program pertinent to increasing ASEAN integration. And finally, um, the report also suggests some recommendations on capacity building um, as it relates to ASEAN integration. First, implement regional benchmarking. Um, benchmarks are as venues for knowledge sharing, partnership, and building 
among MOEs, then develop uh, content knowledge on ASEAN among educators on ASEAN, particularly school heads um, as instructional leaders to promote school level ASEAN awareness activities. Okay, for, for the time being, those are the recommendations that I can share with you. Um, now, more than ever, the change management strategies are always looked at by the stakeholders. Synergistic actions for education have always been desirable response to the needs of time. There are change changes around us that call for appropriate change strategies. The current pandemic calls for synergistic action among our leaders and all the stakeholders in education. The change management process evident in the change strategies employed by the selected MOEs in Southeast Asia remain relevant response to the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic. Responding to the challenge of COVID-19 pandemic entails change management strategies where our change process framework could be relevant and appropriate. With that, thank you and good afternoon. But before that, I'll be showing to you the, um, the report. I mean, this is how the report looked like. And for those who are interested to have a copy, you can download the full report. Visit our website, www.simio-inotech.org. Again, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for that informative presentation, Dr. Almonte Acosta.
mindful of the surrounding noise and your location as a courtesy to the current speaker or presenter. Please use the hand-raising function to be recognized. For our colleagues joining us in Facebook and YouTube Live, we encourage everyone to actively participate and write your feedback and questions in the comment section. Members of the organizing team will take note of your question and if time permits, have them responded to by our speakers. Certificates of attendance will be issued accordingly to all registered participants of the webinar. Please confirm your registration by answering the evaluation form. The link to the event's evaluation form will also be shown at the end of the webinar. Currently, we've just finished hearing from Dr. Charlene Acosta about the ASEAN integration research output of Simeo Innotech. For today, we have so much more in store for everybody apart from launching our DBTE and the CSLP, certain programs that people from the ASEAN can benefit from. So we encourage everyone to just sit back and relax and, and wait for further instructions. Enjoy the afternoon for a while. To those just tuning in for now, we just finished hearing from Dr. Charlene Almonte Acosta about the research on ASEAN integration. To further situate the findings of our regional research, we have invited two reactors to expound, react, and even relate findings of the recently presented regional research on current developments in the Southeast Asian education sector. For the first reactor, we have the Undersecretary for Planning and Human Resource and Organizational Development Field Operations and Head of the International Cooperation Office of the Philippine Department of Education. He is currently the Chair of the ASEAN Senior Officials Meeting on Education, or the SOMED. Let's welcome the Honorable Dr. Jesus L. R. Mateo. Good morning to all of you. As the Philippines representative to the Inoteco Burning Board, I take this opportunity to express my appreciation for the Center's contribution to the regional discourse on ASEAN integration and the role of the individual ministries and Department of Education towards promoting ASEAN integration. Since its inception in 1967, ASEAN has made significant strides in pursuing its vision of a concert of sharing and caring societies in the region. The recently completed study describes the environment, implementation of relevant plans and policies, as well as the interventions to sustain the gains made among seven ASEAN countries. The regional study indeed moves us forward in gaining a deeper understanding the policies and interventions made by the different countries. In the true ASEAN spirit, the study facilitates learning from each other as together we embark on the journey of fulfilling the vision of the leaders of ASEAN. I take note of the exploration of the process of nature and context of change management strategies, as well as the framework adopted in the study. 
which as a means to identify and understand the specific change management strategies planned and implemented by the ministries, the study sought to document and analyze the change strategies implemented by different MOCs. With the planning and organizational development as key parts of my portfolio at the Department of Education, I also take note of the recommendation from the study in the course of implementing reforms, educational reforms. I particularly appreciate the value of regional collaboration and the specific means identified in the report to facilitate the change management process. In this context, building and strengthening the ASEAN community actually takes place at the level of the schools and communities. Hence, the ASEAN leaders emphasis on the value of people-to-people -people interaction in building the ASEAN community. The same theme surfaced in September 2014 Strategic Dialogue of Education Ministers and served as the underlying concept cutting across the CIMEO 7 priorities. The ministers have called for a systematic analysis of the knowledge, skills, and values that will be needed to effectively respond to the changing global context and more particularly to the ever-increasing complexity of the Southeast Asian economic, socio-cultural, and political environment for which SIMEO and the Ministries of Education could serve as the principal mechanism for promoting ASEAN integration in the learning community and in developing teachers imbued with ASEAN ideals for building the ASEAN community. We all know that regional cooperation and strengthening of mechanisms that promote cohesiveness and synergy in the region's education community cannot be overemphasized. Whilst the study was conducted before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the recently concluded 15th ASEAN Senior Officials Meeting, or SOMED, and the 11th ASEAN Education Ministers Meeting, both convened by the, P the Philippines, placed the need, even urgency, for regional cooperation in responding to the health emergency and in delivering education services amidst a pandemic. The theme of the Philippines chairmanship was transforming education the ASEAN way, forging partnerships in the age of global disruptions. Transforming education in the region, even as individual countries are grappling with the disruption, is a way of turning crisis into an opportunity. In the process, building and strengthening partnerships from the state level to the individual institutions and organizations and engaging all relevant stakeholders is essential. Particularly instructive were the different contexts and strategies that individual countries have adopted in responding to the pandemic. The experiences and further needs that surface in the process of implementing the interventions. The statements shared by colleagues in different ministries of education were valuable inputs for the Philippines as we map out the next steps in our response and recovery efforts. During the meeting, the senior officials and the ministers sought to explore more platforms and opportunities for exchanging experiences, promising practices and lessons learned in mitigating the impacts of this crisis on the education sector. Whilst the specific contexts differ, the ministries of education appreciated the experiences of others in a cautiously reopening schools, adherence to public health guidelines, and the over arcing importance of ensuring the health and safety as well as psychosocial well-being of students. As an advocate of inclusion and broad access to learning opportunities, the ministers call for utilizing a wide range of remote learning solutions that would adequately address the needs of learners. Particularly, the most marginalized was particularly well welcome where innovative solutions can be applied, the education sector's response enabled us to demonstrate and assess the relative effectiveness of various teaching learning approaches. The education leaders expressed support for the implementation of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, adopted in the 37th ASEAN Summit in the spirit of recognizing education as key to the region's post-pandemic recovery. 
digital skills and literacy, 21st century skills, and ICT-enabled teaching and learning were emphasized to build resilient education systems that are able to withstand future threats and disruptions. The education leaders also underlined the importance of the post-2020 ASEAN work plan on education, which is currently being developed to succeed in the current work plan. Noting that the data collection and validation for the study was conducted in 2018, and revisiting the outcome document for the 11th ASEAN ministers meeting and the 15th SOMED, there was notable congruence of the study's findings and the collective views of the education leaders, creating a climate for change, engaging and enabling organizations, and nurturing and sustaining change were all evident in the views expressed by the education leaders. Of course, these views were shared in the context of region's response to the pandemic. The pandemic, the COVID pandemic, is probably the greatest disruption in the region's school system since Second World War. In consolidating what we learned from that experience, we can be guided by the views shared by the region's education leaders. Our education system must be forward-looking, future-oriented, and our interventions strategic. The region must thus move forward addressing this concern as a community developing joint strategies and programs, not only individual countries, but towards addressing educational problems as a community of nations. On that note, thank you again for listening. Thank you, uh, uh, Simeo Inotech, led by Dr. Bakanui. And thank you to all the participants in this undertaking. Keep safe. Thank you, Yusek Jess, for that insightful reaction to our regional research. Indeed, education systems must be forward-looking, future-oriented, and strategic. Now, to provide us with a regional perspective from the ASEAN headquarters in Indonesia, we have the Assistant Director for the Education, Youth, and Sports Division of the ASEAN. Let's welcome Ms. Mary Ann Therese Manuson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nemo, for the kind introduction. Um, Dr. Ramon Bacani, Dr. Ethel Valenzuela, uh, Dr. Sherlyn Acosta, um, His Excellency Yusek Jess Mateo, uh, colleagues and friends, um, good afternoon. Uh, first of all, um, please allow me to thank uh, the organizers, Simia Inotech, for uh, extending this invitation to me. Um, as uh, some of you might know, Simia Inotech holds a special place in my heart um, because uh, it's actually where I started my career in education. Um, well, thank you again for uh, this opportunity to provide uh, a reaction to the findings of uh, the regional research on ASEAN integration and change management responses of selected Southeast Asian ministries of education. Um, the research and its findings um, are particularly relevant in light of the vital role education plays in ASEAN integration, specifically in achieving um, the ASEAN Community Vision 2025. Adding to its relevance, and this was already touched upon by um, the previous uh, speakers, is the fact that the region is confronting the largest disruption of education systems in history. The impacts of COVID-19 on uh, the education sector have certainly been tremendous. In the region alone, in, in the ASEAN region, the learning of over 152 million children and youth have been affected um, by widespread school um, uh, closures. At the heart of the work of the ASEAN Senior Officials Meeting on Education, or SOMED, is to contribute to the vision of a socially cohesive and sharing um, sorry, and caring ASEAN region by promoting ASEAN awareness and identity, advancing education for all, boosting capacity building and exchange of knowledge and experience around education issues, and enhancing coordination with other ASEAN sectors in implementing collaborative programs in education. In the past five years, the ASEAN education sector has achieved remarkable efforts to promote 
ASEAN integration in the context of the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2016 to 2020, including the development of the ASEAN Declaration on Out of School Children and Youth, the establishment of its accompanying working group, and the development of an action plan to implement the declaration, the awarding of over 500 scholarships for intra-ASEAN student mobility and the development of a pilot regional credit transfer system under the EU support to higher education in the ASEAN region or SHARE, the establishment and implementation of scholarship programs for research and study supported by ASEAN's partners such as Canada, the People's Republic of China, Hungary, India, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Norway, and uh, the United States, and capacity building for education personnel and government officials, such as those that were supported through the SHARE program and the Regional Cooperation Program on TVET, or RECO TVET. Additionally, numerous policy dialogues have been convened since 2016 that brought together a wide range of stakeholders from government, academia, and business and industry. So these achievements are um, evidence of the ASEAN education sector's collective unremitting efforts to use education as a vehicle to promote ASEAN regional integration. The regional recommendations put forward by the study are significant in the context of the ongoing development of the next ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021 to 2025. Allow me to highlight a few recommendations in the report and the steps being taken by the ASEAN education sector to address them. The recommendation on um, strengthening alignment and harmonization of regional initiatives of CMEO and ASEAN. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to uh, inform you that the ASEAN and CMEO secretariats are actually working very closely. And um, on an annual basis, um, we hold coordination meetings to promote complementarities between our work and activities. On um, strengthening the teaching and learning of English as the designated official language of ASEAN, um, as an important curricular goal of basic education. Uh, this priority is contained in the Initiative for ASEAN Integration Work Plan, as well as the ASEAN Work Plan on Education. Various training programs on curriculum planning and pedagogy vis-a-vis -vis teaching English as a second language have been conducted benefiting teachers from um, CLMV countries, from Cambodia, Lao PDR, Myanmar, and Vietnam. This priority will again feature prominently in the post-2020 work plans of both IAI, the Initiative for ASEAN Integration, and Education. Um, there is also a recommendation to implement continuous evaluation and improvement of the ASEAN work plan in education. This recommendation is being considered by the ASEAN education sector in designing a solid monitoring and evaluation framework for the post-2020 education work plan. We are also discussing with UNESCO as to the regional benchmarking of SDG4 targets and indicators. In the conversation regarding ASEAN integration, it is important to highlight that ASEAN has made clear its commitment to build robust and future-proof education systems and competitive and resilient human resources. The ASEAN Declaration on Human Resources Development for the Changing World of Work and its roadmap aim to cultivate a culture of lifelong learning and promote inclusive education. The roadmap comprises activities to digitally transform education in our region with emphasis on promoting digital literacy and 21st century skills, digital infrastructure development, online platforms, and open educational resources. The newly established ASEAN TVET Council also seeks to advance quality TVET and skills development that is relevant to current and future job needs through multi-sectoral coordination, research, and development. In addition, and this was um, uh, previously mentioned by um, Yusek Jess in his remarks, the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, the region's consolidated exit strategy from the COVID-19 crisis, identifies the promotion of 21st century skills 
and the strengthening of digital skills, digital literacy, and infrastructure among its key initiatives. As can be seen in the recovery framework, education is fundamental not only to ASEAN integration, but also to rebuilding the region post-COVID-19. Finally, the post-2020 ASEAN work plan on education is likewise envisioned to guide the ASEAN education sector in continuing to advance quality, inclusive, and equitable education that is fit for the future. The concept of lifelong and life-wide learning will pervade the work plan. And the work plan will be responsive to the needs and situations of all learners, especially the most disadvantaged. So um, I'll stop here. I believe this is all the time that I have. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Manuson, for that timely reaction and reflection as regards Simeo Inotech's regional research on ASEAN integra integration. We would also like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. Azhar Ahmad, Director of Educational Planning and Research Division of the Ministry of Education of Malaysia. May we ask Dr. Ahmad to open and share his screen for the participants to hear his reaction to our research. Yes. Thank you, Nimo. Can you hear me? I would like to share my slides here. Yes. Hello, Nimo. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Loud and clear, sir. Yeah, can, can I start my sharing? Yes, sir. You may proceed, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, oh. sir. So actually, I, we have uh, some slide to, to be shared here. Uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Raymond uh, Baskani, Simeo Inotech uh, Center Director. Uh, Dr. Ethel Agnes Valenzuela, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Education Malaysia, I would like to con congratulate Simeo Inotech for this regional research on ASEAN integration change management responses of selected Southeast Asian ministries of education. I believe this research has given us insights of the education trans transformation undertaken by the countries involved. In particular, the study guided by Cotter's eight steps process for leading change to create a climate for change, engage and enable the organizing and implement and sustain change will add re reliability and validity of the research method. This qualitative approach provided rich data from relevant stakeholders. And I believe the researchers went through rigorous analysis and validation. From the analysis, we could gather that all seven countries have taken various strategic measures to ensure systemic change at the education sectors, to ensure transformation is relevant and future roof. All countries have shown that Development of strategies and initiatives have, have taken into consideration of the pervasiveness of current education landscape as a result of globalization and technology advancement. Hence, we could see that strategic directions focus on growth as iterated by Wawasan 2035 by Brunei Darussalam, National Vision 2030 by Cambodia, Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013-2025 at basic and higher education as well as initiatives by other countries in this study. In the case of Malaysia, the summary of findings are succinctly reported. The Ministry of Education Malaysia continuously focuses on growth of the nation through the provisions of quality education to all Malaysian children. Systematic change is envisaged through five system aspirations, which is 
access, equity, quality, unity, efficiency, and six students' aspirations, which are acknowledged bilingual proficiency, thinking skills, ethics, and spirituality, leadership skills, and national identity. Currently, Malaysia will conclude its second wave of implementation and will embark on its final stage of transformation. The findings of the study will add value to the spirit of regionalism among senior countries. While we have made significant progress as a, as a region, progress within countries have been uneven. There are still remaining pockets of unreached children and youth who are difficult to capture despite various initiatives and efforts that have been put in place. Hence, this study is timely and innovative to share our best practices that will contribute towards a more efficient and effective delivery of this, of this uh, education system. Although countries' development plans, strategic directions, and initiatives are very contextual, findings from the report showed that countries' sector plans are very much aligned with the CIMO seven priorities and will provide guidance and insights towards CIMO post-2020 strategic plan. Thank you for this uh, opportunity to share Malaysia's thought and impulse, and we hope to further strengthen this collaboration in the near future. With that, thank you very much, and selamat petang. Thank you so much for that insightful presentation, Dr. Ahmad. To further expand our reach and sharing this vision, sir, I would just like to ask if you would be willing to share the slides to the public so that we would be able to further expand the reach of that discussion? Yeah, yeah, we, sure, we will. Okay, sir. Um, the team will coordinate with you to secure a copy of the file and we will share it to the public for them to better appreciate the whole discussion that we just finished early on. Thank All you right. so much. We will, send, we will send it immediately. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. To further our discussion, we are now opening the floor for questions. Participants can address their questions to our main speakers, Dr. Sherdin Acosta, Ms. Manuson, and Dr. Ahmad Azar from the ASEAN and from the ASEAN, and questions will be collected from the comment section in our official Facebook and YouTube live accounts while the, presenta while the presentations have been ongoing early on. Currently, we actually have, oh wow, we already have questions. We really appreciate the active participation of our audience for this afternoon. It seems like everybody's really hyped up to share their insights on this presentation. So for the first question, I believe it's addressed to Dr. She. Good afternoon, Dr. She. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, hello. Good afternoon, Dr. She. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon. Okay. The first question is addressed to you, ma'am. Uh, okay. What do you think are the critical competencies required of an educator for them to prepare their students for an integrated ASEAN community? What are the... I'm sorry, I... I... Okay, ma'am, let me repeat the question. What do you think are the critical competencies required of an educator to better prepare their students in an integrated ASEAN community? Okay, so thank you for that question. And um, I think um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good question. I, I believe um, in order to uh, prepare the students for increasing ASEAN integration, the competencies um, needed, I mean, initially or Primarily, it's the critical thinking skills. So we have to improve the critical thinking skills of our students um, because um, if we if um, they are critically aware and they have um, they have polished their critical thinking, then they know how to position themselves in the increasing action integration. The second one, the second skill is the improvement of oral and written communication. As we all know, English is the language of the ASEAN. And while we were um, interviewing, um, it was emphasized by many countries that they are um, willing to improve their English and they envy the Philippines for having the capacity to speak the English language 
better. So I think what we can do, we have to continuously polish this oral, written, and communication communication skills among our students, critical thinking skills, because they, we have to have an awareness of what a CN is, how do we position ourselves, how can we competitive in uh, the future, and at the same time, how can, how can the students enhance their oral and communication skills to be aligned with um, the increasing ASEAN integration? Thank you. Thank you so much for that, ma'am. I believe that was that was a very insightful answer that fully addressed the question that was raised earlier in the presentation. The next question that's been given by the audience is addressed to Ms. Manuson. Good afternoon, ma'am. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yes. So the question is from Ms. Escobarte via Facebook. Uh, the question is... I'm sorry, this isn't clear. Uh, does ASEAN integration program include cultural and social economic exchange program of social studies students and teachers to develop a more to develop a closer tie to develop closer ties and to foster strong brotherhood? Essentially, um, the question I believe asks if there are existing programs that encourages social economic exchange for social studies in particular to further expand their horizons and their perspectives. Again, to repeat the question, are there existing programs in ASEAN integration that foster, that foster closer ties among ASEAN countries through exchange programs among students and teachers? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the question. Um, it was mentioned earlier by um, Dr. Acosta in her presentation that um, people to people, promoting people to people exchanges is um, critical to uh, ASEAN integration. And um, we actually implement a number of um, um, programs to increase people-to-people uh, -people links uh, on various levels. There are student exchange programs. Um, there are also programs uh, um, promoting um, exchanges between teachers. Um, and we also support uh, a wide range of um, youth exchange programs, not just um, benefiting uh, ASEAN citizens, um, but we also have um, programs um, involving um, uh, ASEAN's dialogue partners, um, meaning uh, countries outside of, of the region um, that um, support the ASEAN in terms of um, um, funding and um, other forms of support. I, I hope that answers the question, but uh, my short answer is yes. Um, on various levels, we do strongly promote um, people to people exchanges, um, as we believe that these are crucial to promoting a sense of um, ASEAN identity, awareness and values. Thank, Thank you. you so much for that answer, ma'am. Uh, this At this part of the program, I would just like to apologize to the audience. I believe we've been receiving an influx of questions as early as we started, even before we reached the part of the open forum. But due to time constraints, we would only be able to answer for one, questions address, one question addressed per speaker and one addressed to everybody. As for the other questions, we would try our best to address them after the webinar should we have the opportunity to go back to the comment section. So for the third question, it's addressed to Dr. Azhar Ahmad. Can you hear me, sir, clearly? Can you, he can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, the question yes. is, what are some of the innovations in the Ministry of Education in support of ASEAN integration that may be applicable to the current pandemic situation? How do we now better manage changes that we face now? Again, to repeat the question, what are some of the innovations in the Ministry of Education in support of ASEAN integration that may be applicable to the current pandemic situation? How do we now better manage changes that we face now in light of the COVID pandemic? Hmm. Okay, it's a very currently uh, question. So in Malaysia, uh, we are active, actively involved in uh, this, our uh, home-based learning uh, strategies uh, with our uh, 
children. Although we also acknowledge that we are facing uh, challenges in doing this uh, home-based learning, uh, especially on the uh, on the uh, technology connectivity, you know. Uh, so uh, by now we somehow we have managed to 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 uh, manage that. Uh, and, it, and at the same time, we uh, have uh, conducted uh, a research uh, on how uh, uh, we uh, conduct the home-based learning and uh, in especially on the uh, effectiveness of this uh, home-based learning. Of course, uh, we cannot compare uh, the home-based learning uh, effectiveness with the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, teaching and learning process. And we have shared this uh, with our colleagues among the ASEAN countries also. Uh, and at the same time, we are very grateful that we can uh, see that our colleagues in the ASEAN countries uh, also uh, doing uh, so many uh, initiatives in facing these uh, uh, pandemics. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question, uh, for that answer to that question, sir. For our final question in the open forum, it's going to come from our, from one of our own, from Simeo Inotech, Dr. Philip Pernell. Good afternoon, sir. I believe you have a question for our speakers. Uh, not really a question, uh, more uh, a, a commentary, if I may. Uh, this is Philip Burnell from the Simeo Inotech team. Um, and I was very pleased to see Nina again. Uh, Nina joined us some, about 10 years ago and helped develop our teacher's toolkit for Southeast Asia on ASEAN. Uh, we have identities toolkit on, uh, uh, for teachers to be able to uh, better understand ASEAN and ASEAN identity. So, Nina, great to see you again, uh, uh, and thanks for your sharing. Um, just something uh, for our teachers, when I was, I've been observing and monitoring the, the Facebook feed, and uh, I see that we have teachers and school principals uh, from all over uh, the Philippines, uh, from Cotabato, uh, from Northern Luzon to Negros Occidental. So, um, Trying to bring the conversation to something more concrete, because when you're dealing with ASEAN, change management, regional integration, these are very abstract uh, concepts, and sometimes it's not so easy to uh, understand what does it mean for me as a teacher, what does it mean for my students uh, moving forward, what does it mean for my school as a school head. And from the research that we uh, conducted, um, I think there are some insights that uh, when we talk of reg uh, regional integration, uh, it touches everybody's lives. It's not just touching the lives of the Institute of Education. Uh, it's actually touching the lives of all of us. Uh, for example, uh, one of the reasons for the uh, K-12 to reforms, why the Philippines and also more recently Myanmar were, were had to add additional years to their uh, their high school program was specifically because of increasing ASEAN regional integration and uh, the recognizing that school teachers, for example, in Bangkok, in Thailand, would possibly lose their jobs if they did not uh, have the necessary equivalency of certification. They would no longer be recruiting teachers from the Philippines because we only had uh, 10 years of high school compared to uh, the 12 years uh, standard in most ASEAN countries. So they're very real, and this is a very real impact on teachers' lives. Likewise, if you go to uh, schools throughout Thailand, every school in Thailand would have, uh, would have a small corner in the classroom, which is an ASEAN corner, and you would see uh, examples of knowledge products, of cultural products, flags, and others, other, other aspects from the different uh, 10 member countries where they're really trying to instill uh, a sense of identity or awareness of, of, of ASEAN and being a member of ASEAN. Uh, Dr. Bakani, in, uh, in his opening remarks, mentioned uh, a recent C uh, Southeast Asian primary learning metrics study that was launched uh, today, uh, yesterday and today. And in that study, there was a survey of, uh, of students, about uh, 30,000 students, 
and they were asked, did they identify themselves as being a member of Southeast Asia in addition to being a member of their country? And only 45% uh, of those students uh, felt that they were part of an Asian community uh, beyond their um, national community. So this is an area that uh, for teachers to have to, to work on uh, in terms of strengthening that uh, sense of community uh, amongst the, the South Asian re East Asian region because it has real implications for their mobility, their career options, um, once they complete their schooling, in terms of opening up possibilities for employment in other countries, studying in other countries, um, uh, and being able to communicate and share knowledge with uh, educators from across the region. So these are very concrete and very basic um, impacts on every person's life, not just the, uh, at the strategic policy level. And finally, the comment I would make from the research that we, our observation or our insight was that integration, ASEAN integration, is not a noun. It is not some a state that you gain to. It is a continuous process. It's continually evolving. And that's why in the research, we refer to it as increasing uh, ASEAN integration, not integration per se. Uh, there is a goal, uh, an ideal vision of where we want to attain, but the process is ongoing, it evolves, it unfolds in different ways, in different forms, in different countries, in different communities, at different levels of governance. And it's an ongoing process which deepens and widens and uh, throughout communities. And, and, and it's the role of educators to help support uh, that evolving process of increasing integration. So these are just some insights, uh, Nemo, that uh, ad additional from the research. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I believe that reaction full further enriched our discussion for this afternoon. And I think I speak for the rest of the audience in claiming that that added to their knowledge as well. And it made the experience all the more fruitful for them this afternoon. Again, I would like to thank our reactors for joining us today, for answering and addressing the questions faced online, and for sharing their time and expertise in addressing all of these concerns and furthering our discussion on ASEAN integration. Again, on behalf of Simeo Inotech, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. To those who have asked other questions in our online platforms, namely Facebook, YouTube, and other streaming platforms, we would like to apologize for not being able to address all of them due to time constraints, but rest assured that we would try to go back to the comment sections to answer them should we have the opportunity to do so after the webinar. At this point, we would also like to take this opportunity to share with everyone our new programs that, of, that, that are being offered by Simeo Inotech, one of which is the Simeo Inotech Research Partnership Grant, or the SIRPG. The said grant is a mechanism to support collaborative research projects between Simeo Inotech and other suitably qualified research organizations or institutions. It seeks to enhance the richness, diversity, and depth of, of the center's research portfolio and expand and strengthen opportunities for institutional partnership by funding research projects based on SI's identified thematic priority research areas. For this period, the research priorities are on transversal skills and competencies in education and outcome-based education or OBE. For more details, you may reach Dr. Sherlyn A. Acosta, one of our speakers earlier, through she at simeo-inotech.org, or Mr. Kevin Galanida at kevin at simeo-inotech.org. Their details have been provided for you in the screen. Simeo Inotech commits to strengthen teacher and school head preparations for the future of learning. Testament to this commitment are two new programs that we developed for teachers and school heads, namely the BBTE and the CSLP. But what exactly are these two programs? Both are anchored on competency frameworks recognized by the Ministries of Education in Southeast Asia. In particular, the competency framework for teachers was co-developed by the Teachers' Council of Thailand, the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education Organization, Secretariat, Simeo Inotech, and the 11 ministries of education in the region. These two programs contribute to Inotech's vision of co-creating a better future for every learner in Southeast Asia. For the first one, we have the BBTE, or the Becoming a Better Teacher Every Day. We believe that a teacher's experience shapes the lens through which her learners see the world. 
Therefore, it is important for teachers to continue learning, growing, and expanding their horizons. In a text, Becoming a Better Teacher Every Day, or BBTE, is a massive open online course that provides Southeast Asian teachers with a space to reflect on their purpose and motivation, take stock of ideas for their professional growth, and more importantly, learn from the experiences of other teachers from all over the region. To know more about BBTE, let's watch this video. Over the past few weeks, we hosted live online conversations among educators in Myanmar, Brunei Darussalam, Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia, and the Philippines through BBTE's Learning Circle. The Learning Circles hope to enable meaningful conversations among teachers and create a community of practice and inquiry. To learn more about BBTE and its Learning Circles, email us at betterteachers at simeo-inatech.org as shown in your screen. Next is the Southeast Asian School Leadership Program. We are still in the midst of a pandemic, navigating through many unknowns and uncertainties. With no clear rule book, the spotlight is on school heads to rise above the challenge to lead and to manage their schools. With this in mind, Inotech developed the online Southeast Asian School Leadership Program, or the CSLP, that provides school heads with a platform to make sense of their experiences and emerging realities and tools to weave in the lessons from this pandemic into the regular school processes and practices. To know more about the CSLP, let's watch this video. Strong waves of doubt and worry have made our journey rocky as we face this pandemic. Do you feel yourself searching your years of experience for solutions? Everyone is treading deep waters carefully. The first thing you should realize is that you are not alone in the newness of this environment. 
This has never happened before, so there are no maps to help you leave schools in a pandemic. But you can steer your ship mindfully and inch your way forward. Welcome aboard the Southeast Asian School Leadership Program. Think of this as your new crew. We are a congress of school leaders where we could share and reflect on thoughts and sentiments. Now more than ever is a good time to build a strong community where you can learn and draw inspiration from. Together with your crew, you can explore, experiment, and innovate practices and solutions. The pandemic may have put a stop on a lot of things, but it also created opportunities to build back better school systems. What is most important now is that you learn from your experiences so you can become stronger and better school leaders. The Southeast Asian School Leadership Program will serve as an anchor as you push onto the deeper waters together with your fellow school leaders. Over the past months, you might have found yourself asking these questions. Am I doing it right? Can I overcome these challenges? Am I leading my school effectively in this pandemic? In this program, you will be engaged in self-paced as well as collaborative exercises and assignments for deeper connection and learning. There will be lots of opportunities for self-reflection. You will learn from each other's wins and missteps and you can take comfort in knowing that you are not alone in this journey. As captain of the ship, you have the big responsibility to prepare your students and schools for stormy oceans. While this pandemic may have slowed you down or blown you off course, remember to claim the important lessons you have learned and take them with you as you carry on in your journey. Whatever strong wind may blow against our ship, we are ready to reinforce our sails and set course to our destination. Set sail with us. Inotech will launch the program's pilot offering in January, from January to March 2021. To learn more about the program, please email Mitch at simio inotechorg or edith at simio inotechorg They said details can be seen on your screen. We have finally reached the most awaited segment for this afternoon. Are you excited? I am. Trailblazers in education across the ASEAN have continuously contributed to reinventing and reshaping the landscape of learning. To recognize the significant contributions, we are officially launching the Southeast Asia Educational Innovation Awards. To confirm it of the Southeast Asia Educational Innovation Awards, seek to recognize the remarkable achievements of teachers, community education workers, and other development workers in the region. It is envisioned to encourage and inspire others who are working in the communities to share and set an example for other development-oriented workers. The award focuses on the innovative practices of these teachers and community education workers, which have had a positive impact on learners and the communities served by the teachers and education workers. The specific aims in conferring the award are, number one, to honor and give recognition to educators and development workers in Southeast Asia whose exemplary achievements have produced positive change among lives of learners and the communities they serve. Number two, to seek out and document exemplary work in imp improving teaching and learning practices through application of effective innovations to achieve learning goals amidst limited resources. Number three, to provide examples of effective innovative teaching and learning practices for other education workers. And lastly, number four, to encourage interaction and cooperation among education workers across the region. Practicing teachers and community education workers who are citizens sub or subjects of SIMU member countries may be nominated for the award. The nomination should document the innovative practice, 
the context in which the innovation is applied, the issues that it tries to address, and the positive impact on the learners and other members of the community. The nominees may be employed by the government, the community, a non-government or community organization, or part of a development project. The specific themes to be covered in a given award cycle will be informed by the Center of Simeo Ministries of Education and through its network of partners in the region. Nominees must be endorsed by the respective Ministry of Education in order to be qualified. The award will comprise a plaque of recognition and a travel grant for study visits around Southeast Asia to share ideas and innovative practices with other education workers. For more information about the award, you may refer to the contact details as seen in your screen right now. The call for nominations will officially be issued tomorrow, December 3, 2020. How exciting! We earnestly hope to see your entries in this cycle of Southeast Asia Educational Innovation Awards. To officially close our program, we would like to welcome the manager of Simeo Innotech's Knowledge Management and Networking Office, Mr. Benito Benyoza. Thank you, Nemo. And uh, I take this opportunity to greet all our participants, whom I understand uh, have joined us, from, joined us from all over Southeast Asia. And I note that some uh, uh, 400 or 500 are currently with us on Facebook. Uh, this is indeed an afternoon well spent and a fitting celebration for CMEO the Southeast Asian Ministers of Education organization. Some 55 years ago, the education leaders in the region gathered in Bangkok and set their commitment for cooperation in the fields of education, science, and culture. The organization now comprises 26 specialized regional centers and network operating out of 10 Southeast Asian countries, one of which, of course, is Simio Inotech. Over the past couple of hours, we had the opportunity to delve deeper into the change management strategies being adopted by the ministries of education in the region as we move towards closer integration as a regional bloc. In typical Southeast Asian way, different ministries have applied different strategies to meet the requirements, thus exemplifying unity amidst diversity among the countries in the region. Uh, we also got a glimpse of some of the forthcoming learning events being offered by Enotech. We would, of course, keep you posted on the future of learning events. And this occasion, judging from Nemo's excitement, also marks the official announcement of this Enotech Southeast Asian Educational Innovation Awards. We will disseminate further information on the awards through the ministries and partner development organizations and various stakeholders. At this point, let me then express our thanks on behalf of the Knowledge Management and Networking Office of Inotech. Particularly, thanks, uh, we thank uh, Dr. Azar Ahmad, our friend representing the Ministry of Education of Malaysia, who is able to join us today and benefit, benefited us with uh, his reflection and insights. Also, thank you to a big thank you to Nina, a friend and a colleague. And of course, our esteemed uh, Undersecretary, Dr. Uh, Jesus Lorenzo uh, uh, L.R. Mateo, who happens to be the chair of the high officials, uh, sorry, the chair of the uh, senior officials meeting of uh, ASEAN, recently concluded uh, uh, some ed, as well as uh, the chair of the governing board of CIMIO Inotech. So, once again, let me express my thanks on behalf of KMNO and Inotech for their participation in this forum. And also, apart from the speakers the, uh, and the other organizations that helped us share information about this event, this is, uh, let me point out that this is an initial offering and we would welcome your views and suggestions for future re regional knowledge fora. Once again, thanks to our speakers and presenters for sharing the insights and to all of you for giving us the opportunity to share knowledge with the Southeast Asian education community. Maraming salamat po. Terima kasih. Mabuhay.
Thank you so much, Sir Benoza, for that closing remark. That ends our webinar for today. We thank everyone for their time and participation. It is our utmost hope that we all leave this webinar with not just new knowledge, but also a renewed sense of drive and purpose to continuously improve the state of education all throughout the region. Don't forget to fill out our evaluation form as seen in your screen. Participants will be able to get their certificate as soon as they accomplish the evaluation form. Again, the deadline for the evaluation form to be accomplished is at 8 p.m. today. You are given until 8 p.m. to accomplish the evaluation form. At this point as well, may we request our resource speakers to please turn on your cameras for a quick group photo. Are you ready? Okay. One. Okay, turn off. Okay, turn on. Oh, please turn on your camera, please. Thank you. Please turn on your cameras, everybody. Everybody. Okay, ready. Okay. Okay. We're good. Okay, we're good. Again, thank you, everyone. This has been Nemo, your host. Thank you for celebrating with us. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much.